All right, guys, so here we are with uh, question number one, which is going to be slightly longer. Um, but yeah, I want to, to just point something out here. Um, I'm going to call this equation one, and I'm going to call this equation two. Now, obviously, this is the linear equation here, and this is a nonlinear equation. Now, in previous example, I was saying the recommendation is to use a linear equation to make one of the unknowns a subject. And if you follow suit, you'd have made y the subject and therefore um, substitute for whatever y is inside the nonlinear equation. Now I'm going to show you it can work the other way as well. So what I want you to do is to be um, versatile in how you approach a question. And then ultimately, when you get more mature in, in, in working these questions, you're going to determine which route is best for you. So what I'm going to do here um, is essentially I'm going to use... Um, the nonlinear equation, which is x plus y squared equals 8, and I'm actually going to make x a subject. So x would be equal to 8 minus y squared. So I know what x is um, equal to, 8 minus y squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this inside the linear equation. I'm going to show you that you're going to get the same um, results anyway. So you can be dynamic in actual in your, in your um, algorithm in terms of working on the question. So the linear equation is 4x minus y equals 29. So instead of putting x, I'm going to put what x is equal to. So it will be 4, um, open bracket, um, 8 minus y squared. Since x is equal to that, I'm simply replacing x with whatever um, x is equal to. So minus y equals 29. And then I'm going to proceed to expand here. So this would be 32 minus 4y squared um, minus, minus y is equal to 29. So <clears throat> what my intention is, is to make this a quadratic equation as we have been working so far. The only difference is instead of having x, you have y, but it's the same, same thing. So what I'm going to do is just rearrange here, rearrange here. Um, plus 32 and then bring this over minus 29 equals 0. So what I'm going to have here is minus 4y squared minus y and 39 minus 29. I believe that is 3 and that's equal to 0. So if you notice now, this is in the form ay squared um, plus by plus c equals 0. So I know what the value of A is. A is negative 4. Um, there's a 1 here, so I know what the value of B is. That is minus 1. And C is, of course, 3. So what I can do from here is to try to factorize, right? Or use a quadratic formula, whichever you're most comfortable with. So um, two numbers, when added together, gives you B. In this case, B is, as indicated here, B is negative 1. So B is negative 1. And the same two numbers when multiplied should give you AC, which means A times C. So what we have here is minus 4 times 3, which is minus 12. So all I need to do from here is write the factors down of 12, and that would be 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times um, 4 is 12. And I would have, well, I have those factors already. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So I have the factors, okay? So the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Now, the issue is, or the question is, um, sorry about the light going, I don't know why it doesn't stay up. Um, so the question is, what two numbers when added together gives you negative 1, and the same two numbers when you multiply, you get negative 12. Uh, and that seems to be minus 4, and um, positive 3. So these are the two numbers that I'm going to work with because minus 4 added to 3, that gives you minus 1. This is, a, this is an addition, uh, positive. So minus 4 plus 3 gives you minus 1, and minus 4 times positive 3 gives you minus 12. So therefore, um, P is positive 3, and Q is negative 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rewrite um, this equation here, except I'm not going to put back minus 1y. I'm going to use a combination of these two to get us that. So it would be minus 4y squared plus 3y minus 4y, which would give us back the negative 1y um, plus 3. 
uh, equals zero. I could have put the minus four here and the positive three here. I've got the same um, result anyway. So in factorizing here, I'm going to take the minus y out. So I would have four y in here and minus three uh, if I factorize by group in here. So if I factorize by group in here, I'm going to take out, um, let's say, minus, uh, this looks like minus one. So I would have four y uh, minus three here. And how you know on the right track, when you have the same two things in bracket here, so this would be minus y minus one times four y minus three plus zero. So of course, when minus y minus one equals zero, minus y equals one, and we can change the sign. And what you want is what y is equal to, so you change the sign on this side. And if you change the sign on this side of the equation, you have to change all the signs on that side as well. When um, 4y minus 3 equals 0, then 4y would be equal to 3, and y will be equal to 3 quarters. So I now have the two values for y. So um, how do I go about finding the corresponding values of x now? Well, I simply choose one of these two equations. It doesn't matter which one. I usually you just work with the easier one if you're on an exam condition. You're doing paper one this year, so you decide uh, if you get a question like this, what to do. So I'm just going to choose any one of the equations. I'm going I'm to stick, stick with the linear. Uh, so um, when y, let's go back here, when y is equal to minus 1, so I'm using this one first, uh, and I'm going to be using the linear equation. I'm going to be using this one here, where x minus y equals 29. So I'm going to use 4x minus y equals 29. So I'm going to put wherever y is, I'm going to put minus 1. So 4x minus minus 1, be careful with that, equals 29. So 4x plus 1 equals 29. And 4x will be equal to 29 minus 1. So 4x will be equal to 28 and x would be equal to 28 divided by 4, so x would be equal to 7. So what that means is that whenever y is minus 1, the value of x is 7. So you can just indicate that. So I'll indicate that over here. So I'll just indicate that up here. When um, y is equal to minus 1, x is equal to 7. So I have one of the pairs of solution already. So the next one now is to test or to use when y is equal to 3 over 4 to determine whatever the value of x is for that. So when y is equal to 3 over 4, all right, so we have uh, 4x minus y equals 29. Again, I could have used other equation. It doesn't really matter. So 4x minus 3 quarters equals 29. So 4x will be equal to 29 plus 3 over 4. Now, 29 is the same as 29 um, over 1. That's times 4 to make the denominator the same. So that 4x and, of course, 29 times 4. 4 nine is 36. 4 2 is 8. So that's 1, 1, 6. So that's, you have 1, 1, 6 over 4 plus 3 over so 4x would be equal to, now the denominators are the same, so we can just add the numerators. So it would be 119 over 4. And to get x now, x would seem to be equal to 119 over um, 4 divided by 4, which would mean x is equal to 119 over 4 times 1 over 4 x will be equal to 119 over 16. So therefore, when x, sorry, when y is equal to 3 over 4, when y is equal to 3 over 4, x is equal to 119 over 16. So we have two pairs of answers. The first pair is that when y is equal to minus 1, x is equal to 7. And finally, when y is equal to 3 quarters, x is equal to uh, 119 over 16. And you can prove these pairs 
um, in any of the equations. Um, just test them and see if you're actually right. So I hope you found this video insightful and I'll see you guys on the next video.